John Wick might be one of the deadliest assassins out there with insane combat skills and near superhuman abilities, but he also ends up making the toughest enemies. Even with the remarkable talents of the Baba Yaga of the assassin world, he would find it difficult up against hordes of enemy forces without the constant support of some of his trusted friends. Winston, the manager of the Continental Hotel, has probably been by his side more than anyone else and we can't help but wonder why. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. Oh, he has to die. Sorry, gentlemen. We still don't see any other way. What are some of the most outrageous things that Winston has done for John? Winston had everything going for him before he extended his helping arm and vast resources to John. As the manager of the Continental, he wielded significant power in the matters of the High Table, the organization that monitors the global underworld in the John Wick universe. There have been plenty of indications that he took his job very seriously and lived by the rules of the High Table. However, everything changed after John killed one of his sworn enemies, Santino, on Continental grounds. There thereby breaking a fundamental rule of non-violence on these hotel premises. He was declared excommunicado, which basically meant signing his death warrant, but Winston decided to give him an hour's head start and did not execute him as is the norm. He incurred the wrath of the high table following this act of disobedience and going ahead. He did not hesitate to antagonize the mighty organization, all for John's safety. In John Wick Chapter 3, he even faked shooting John to buy him time to get away from the high table, and the bone Hami continued in the recently released movie as well. In John Wick Chapter 4, Winston was willing to risk his life by becoming John's second during the duel, and surely it is not just goodwill or business interest that prompted him to extend such incredible support. Hello, Winston. Jonathan. Are Winston and John Wick related? Even in the harsh and brutal John Wick universe, there is a great value associated with loyalty. From the very first movie, we have seen the titular hitman's friends putting their lives on the line for him, but no one has done it more than Winston, the wise old manager of the Continental. Would someone random risk their entire career just to ensure John Wick's safety and antagonize an organization as powerful as the High Table? Surely John and Winston have a rich history, which is not revealed directly in the movies. However, the fans have theorized multiple possibilities over the years. One of the craziest but extremely believable reasons behind the unreasonable amount of favorite Winston does for John is that they are somehow related. You did the impossible. You stopped. You got out. You only came back because Helen was taken. What are the subtle hints in the movies that support Winston being John's father-in-law? This theory has been fueled further in the recent release, John Wick Chapter 4, where after the seasoned assassin seemingly dies, Winston and the Bowery King pay their last respects by his tombstone. After the Bowery King walks away, Winston can be heard saying, Farewell, my son, before leaving. Now, an elderly person addressing a young fellow as son can just be a way of showing affection, but we have reasons to believe that there might be more behind this choice of words. Firstly, never before in the entire movie franchise has Winston addressed John as son. He refers to him as Jonathan at all times and even during his brief conversations with his trusted concierge Sharon, Winston never uttered the word son before. Even in this case, he uses the words only after the Bowery King walks away, almost whispering to himself, which indicates that he might be maintaining a level of secrecy surrounding his special affection for John. There are theories that suggest John could be Winston son, but that can be ruled by the potential story arc behind John Wick's origins, which indicates that he is an orphan. Even the comic book storyline, which is believed to be canonical, establishes a similar premise. Of course, Winston could have abandoned him as an infant, but that seems unlikely going by the kind of man that Winston is. The other potential theory is that Winston is John Wick's father-in-law, where his late wife Helen Wick was actually Winston's daughter. Is the need for such secrecy a crucial hint about John and Winston's actual relationship? Both John Wick and Winston are powerful men respected in the underworld and commanding significant resources at their disposal. Why would they hide their close ties like a huge secret? Well, to understand the need behind this secrecy, you have to go back to some of the events in John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. In this movie, a corner John heads over to his old accomplice, Sophia, who also happened to owe him a blood oath. 
She wasn't too eager to help him out, but Sophia agreed reluctantly because John had done her a huge favor once. He was instrumental in finding a safe place for her daughter, a location that Sophia never wanted to know because it would make her weak. Sophia was also a manager of a Continental Hotel, and from the looks of it, she did not lack power and resources either. Even then, she felt a need to keep her daughter away forever in an unknown location where her only comfort came from the fact that her daughter was safe. Surely you can connect the dots now. Winston is probably Probably no exception to this rule, and there is an element of vulnerability associated with having close family members in this profession. The likes of the Bowery King, Winston, and Sophia are all lone wolves, with no one to worry about, and this is what makes them all so dangerous. Even a dreaded assassin like John Wick had to do the impossible to get out of this dirty business in order to have a peaceful life with his wife. There is possibly a huge threat associated with having your enemies know about your vulnerabilities, and the loved family members could face a life threat threat at each step if they weren't kept a secret. This compulsion pushed Sophia to keep her daughter away, and it could have been the same for Winston as well. The only exception to this practice can be seen in Osaka Continental in Tokyo, where the manager Koji works along with his daughter Akira. But it must also be noted that Akira is not a common lady, and she is a trained assassin herself, capable of dealing with the threats of this hostile world. Winston probably had a daughter, and he was increasingly worried about her safekeeping. After John fell in love with his daughter and wanted to marry her, Winston Winston laid out a choice for him to quit the assassin business in order to get married. This pushed John to perform an impossible task, and he went on to have a brief family life before an unfortunate terminal illness took his wife. It could also be the case that Winston had to give up on his relationship with his daughter as signs of fealty to the high table. We have seen the organization demand unthinkable sacrifices as a proof of loyalty, and from John having to chop off his finger to the recent instance of the blind assassin Kane having to stay away from his daughter, the list runs long. Winston could have been forced to sever ties with his daughter in order to become the manager of the Continental, and he decided to take up the offer because it seemed like a good way to keep her safe. Just a thought. Why did Winston never attend her funeral? Wouldn't a loving father attend her daughter's funeral or visit her during her last days? Well, the answer to this question might be more complicated than you would think. Surely Winston could have been there for her during her last days or attended her funeral service to console a grieving John, but that would have been a potentially major giveaway. We have known Winston to be a reasonable and practical man, and he would not blow John's cover in his relationship with a man after keeping it a closely guarded secret for so long. You have to remember that John was not yet back to his assassin's life and a civilian identity had to be protected by all means. If you remember his funeral, none of his friends from the underworld governed by the high table attended the service, and it was only Marcus who met him rather secretly following the tragedy. Besides, Winston has been shown to be a calm and a composed man who doesn't show his emotions, and this can be observed from his first interaction with John after his wife's death. When the assassin checks into the Continental Hotel, Winston can be seen stating rather formally and coldly how sorry he is for John's loss. Men in such powerful positions cannot let emotions and personal feelings get in the way of their work, and as a man of logic and reason, Winston probably masked his grieving heart after losing his daughter. A few final words. While we cannot say for sure what binds Winston to John's constant service and why he is the biggest well-wisher that the assassin had, the idea of him being the pro-hitman's father-in-law doesn't sound all that outrageous going by what we just discussed. Do let us know in the comments below what you think about our theory and feel free to suggest theories in favor or against this argument.